When was the, like, the first time you played soccer? In first grade. Tell us what that was like. It was horrible. I want to be a pro player. Who do you want to play for? Real Madrid. My first goal was very exciting, but my other goals, it's just like regular. I score goals on a daily basis. I get hype. I get super hype. I'd be like, go! Like Messi, number 10. I get so happy. We're heading to Boston to play a futsal tournament. It's a Northeast regional tournament, so it's like the best teams from Massachusetts, New Hampshire, a couple of teams from New York. Um, we're one of them. This is actually reserved mostly for clubs. Uh, we're probably the first school in history of this tournament that they participate. I just gotta get my team. I have Hazard as my striker. We have a, such a diverse group of players. I feel like it's a good reflection of New York, you know, and the kids in New York. They're nine-year-olds, they're for the first time away from their families. This is gonna be a, just a great opportunity for us to bond as a team, for them to kind of experience this professional environment. Like, oh, as a team, we're going to a game. As a team, we're going away. And we're gonna go into rooms, all right? You're gonna have your designated area. You're gonna make sure to unpack, to put everything in its place. My name is Mohamed Sissoko, and I'm nine years old, and my favorite player is Messi. My name is Yakuba Bamba, and I'm a defender, right defender, or left. I'm Marco. My favorite player is Eden Hazard. My name is Musa Daho, and I'm nine years old, and my favorite soccer player is Cristiano Ronaldo. My name is David. My favorite thing of being a goalie is that I saved the team. Over here. Right here. I found that first. Right here. I found so. that first. Whoa! 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 First word is athletic. I've been in a clubs and academies for almost 10 years. And, you know, I just noticed something was missing. If you look at the rest of the world, uh, soccer is accessible to everyone. Here, it's very elitist. If you have money, you're able to play soccer. This eliminates a lot of uh, kids who do not have resources and means. It doesn't give them any entry points into the system. These are the communities that I think we could unearth some of the best soccer players we've ever had, and we're just not looking there. Cool. Remember where you're sitting, walk around. Okay, so we're gonna go through our warm up. This is the in school portion of the program. Our youngest kids are five year old, and it's really exciting to see them for the first time getting introduced to the game of soccer and how they respond to it. The game is Treasure Island. You guys are the pirates. Arr! They're trying to get pirates the same treasure, and yeah! at the same time, they're dribbling the ball. They're, you know, using different manipulatives. The beauty of having our kids be with us for long periods of time is that you get to know them. You get to discover their strengths, their weaknesses, what their situation is at home, how they're performing academics, how it all kind of bundles up together. And when you know that, it's so much easier to approach a kid and develop them. 
Miguel told me that she's welcome. We're in my mother's salon. What's going on here? There's a lot, there's a lot of people and they're doing a lot of hair. Kuba, he's one of those players who can really, really make a difference on the field. You know, when he turns it on and when he's at 100%, he's like one of the best players at his age group that I've ever seen. If Yakuba went to a public school and didn't go to success, just a regular round the corner public school, he wouldn't play soccer. He wouldn't be a leader. He would, but it'd be probably in a negative sense. He can dance, he's funny, he's handsome, he's charming. He's friends with everyone. So that can be lethal when you don't have like the right framework. I feel like he's having a bad practice or something. They look pouty. At one point, he stopped coming to practices. And when he came back, he was behind, big time. You know, everyone else is here. You're here, kiddo. Like, you really have to step up. And it's like, no, they're not better than me. And you see that kind of like inner motivation start coming out and channeling the anger about that, right? Like, you know, right away. It was really, really cool to see because then he picked up the pace and then he showed his full potential, how quickly he can catch up. Soccer is very important to me because most of my family actually plays soccer, so I want to make them happy and be good at it. We have a lot of inner city kids who are remarkable athletes and have a sort of drive to use the game as a platform to reach higher. We wanted to make sure that every single kid is included, that every single kid does have a chance. There is an entry point for them to be a part of it. There are some kids who get super hooked on it very, very quickly. So starting in first grade, they are part of the school teams that train two to three times a week. And if there is some exceptional talent out there, they are invited to be part of the club. And then they get to compete externally against other professional clubs and academies. Nice, Maged. Very nice. On Saturdays, I get super hyped up. So like, I wake up at like seven because I'm so happy that I'm going to soccer practice. And then I just take a shower, I eat my cereal, and then I just stand there until soccer practice where and I just run out the door. To have equity, to have educational equity, kids who don't have $10,000 a year to join a travel team and have parents shuttling back and forth, if you're gonna have true equity, then you have to provide the same kind of opportunities that wealthier kids would get. So I was with the New York Red Bulls. I was part of their training programs and their youth and their pre-academy. I felt that I was really able to make much more of a difference here. Players who would not necessarily get an opportunity if we're not in the schools giving it to them. Get up. A lot of these inner city uh, communities don't have fields for the kids to play on. So that shouldn't be, okay, well, these kids can't play soccer. No, of course they can. Soccer is one of those games that, you know, you see on the streets, literally put two shoes, two bags, four bags, and you have a game. Think about kids playing pickup games in Harlem. What's it gonna do to local kids over there who start picking up and playing this game. It's really gonna make a huge, huge impact on communities and overall soccer in the United States. This charter school is solving two problems, barrier to entry financially and lack of fields. And you know what? Those two things are leading to us not winning World Cups. But next is offering a dream, offering a game that opens up a kid's mind. Muhammad, does your dad ever let you drive? No. Um, I'm too young to drive, and uh, I know how to drive, but I can't drive. I can't reach the pedal. How you don't have to drive? Who, who teach you to drive? Um, I just know how you, because of how I see you drive. Oh. All right. Bye. Have a good night, okay? Okay. Be well, okay? Okay. Uh -huh. All right. See you tomorrow morning. My shift starts from 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. But usually I come home at 4, 4.30. It's going to have a time to make a breakfast for the kids. When they're ready to go to school at 7, 7.30. So it's the time for me to go to sleep. I do that every day. I know it's a sport is not well known in Harlem, though. 
So the first step in soccer he took, that was in school. And he loved soccer. He's thinking about every second. When he wake up, the first thing he touch is the ball. He want to be a soccer player and a scientist. I say it's not going to be easy for you to be a scientist and a soccer player. But as you want it, you put some effort on it, you make it up. I do a lot of sacrifice, but I do it for my kids because I love them. Okay, boy. No? It's so important to work hard because to achieve your dream, you have to work very hard to make it happen. See if they're pumped. If they're not, if they're not pumped, I'm gonna pump them up. Good morning. Good morning. You guys look super ready, but I want to double check. What's up? Ready? No. 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 Ready? No. No. I have a separation anxiety right now because I'm not in a bus with the kids. <laughs> this is the first external tournament. It's the first overnight tournament. So it is very important. It's a, it's a milestone. You know, we came here to compete. We're going to go for a win, and they have it in them. I always say they're their own biggest opponent. They can beat everyone. They can lose to everyone. Really, really looking forward to see how they're going to react to it. All right, guys. That's it. All right, first game of the tournament. Don't worry about anything. You play your game and you're gonna be fine. So don't be nervous and don't believe in yourself. Via Cuba, via Cuba. Let's go. Always try to be available as an option and be like a panther. Don't be afraid to shoot, don't be afraid to play. Just play the game. Get it, Cuba. Everyone relax and play the game. Are you scared? So why are you playing like you're scared? Just play the game, come on. Oh. Nice to Cuba. Did they have breakfast? You guys are all being nervous. Relax, control the ball. Let's go guys. Let's go strong, come on, let's go. I want to tell you that I'm not mad. I'm not upset. 3-0, you didn't go down, and, and it wasn't 6-0 or 10-0 and whatnot. You were still fighting, and you were coming back. You have that in you. Support each other more. Support each other more. I'm not able to relate to kids growing up in higher-risk neighborhoods like Harlem or Bronx or bed -Stuy. I cannot relate in that perspective. I can relate to them in terms of like, what does it mean to struggle? What does it mean to not have a head start? Actually, I was discovered during bombing, and we played a tournament while the sirens were still on. I grew up in Belgrade, Serbia. Post-war was very, very difficult for us. I remember when I was young, and my mom would send me to get milk and bread, and you would stay in a line that was literally like 700 meters, 800 meters, to get one loaf of bread and one, you know, a gallon of milk. But when I played soccer, I really felt free. Right, you feel kind of invisible because in that moment you focus on the game. In that moment you're with your friends, you're safe. You feel like you're really, really, really kind of 
Ah, you feel free. That's what it was. And eventually I uh, played for youth national team Yugoslavia at the time. It was still Yugoslavia. Played for like a couple of local like first league teams and then I moved to United States on a soccer scholarship. That was my story and that's how it impacted me and how soccer helped me. It's just one story. We're talking about thousands of kids over here that our program is impacting. If soccer does for one kid what it did for me, talk about success, right? Let's go. Loud and proud, guys. Loud and proud. One, two, three. Success! Take this pace. Make a run. Way to combine, way to go. It's you, Yakuba. Nice, David. There's one coming, Cut. I want you to play like you play in practice. Every ball they go 50-50, whatever ball it is, you guys are just going like this. Get in! Watch your man, Michael, behind you. You're playing against all the professional clubs and academies. This is the first major tournament. Be proud of yourself that we're here and we're playing. And then in the following years, we're gonna come here and we're gonna win. Definitely not looking for excuses over here, but chin up. This is part of the game, all right? This is a learning moment. We are not trying to produce winning teams. We're trying to produce winning individuals. It's that confidence that you build and you constantly have to nurture at the very young ages that, you know, sometimes I would say the coaches forget because they do get to focus a lot on competition, tournaments, trophies. For us, either you win or you learn. I was pretty nervous because I thought I didn't think we would win any game and that and that was true. We had a little bit problems, a little problems, but in practice we can fix it and then the next time we come back we can we can win all our matches or we can go to the finals. I learned that we had to practice more and less joking around and more focusing. Yeah, of course we're losing some of the best athletes to other sports because we're not giving them the olive branch. We're not showing them that the dream works down this road. So I see something like that and become remarkably hopeful for the future of the game in the country. Maybe kids will play their whole lives, maybe they won't, but that gift of confidence, knowing that your hard work leads to achievement, that is a gift that will stay with them their whole lives. I go through challenges, sometimes I fail, sometimes I don't. When I push myself, I succeed. It's kind of like life too. We're not playing games here. We're not playing games here. This is a real thing. This is the, the future of these kids. Everything we do impacts their future. And we want to be able, we have to be able to look and assess and try. We have to give everything we have for them.